welcome to the Little Box of Paints, Art for Grown-Ups. Today I'm going to be showing you an easy at-home art activity that you can do to decorate and relax and just give a, have a chance to express your own creativity while hanging out at home. I've also paired it with a delicious beverage. Um, today's beverage is a sangria. I like to make sangria in the summer, like most people. Um, I hope that you like my version of sangria. I've kind of picked different things from different sangrias I've tried over the years to come up with one that works for me. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the sangria and then show you our art activity for the day. It is a watercolor painting. It's fairly relaxing to do this type of art because it's pretty simple. And uh, in the end, the result usually looks pretty good. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to produce work of art that you are proud of and that you could perhaps uh, hang up in your home. So let's get started. The sangria that I'll be sharing with you is made with a Bordeaux. Now, usually I make sangrias with a cab salve, but um, I happen to have two bottles of kind of a cheaper Bordeaux <laughs> sitting around my house. I think there was like a special three for 12 euro or something. Um, and I tried one and didn't feel the need to drink the rest of them. So what I did was I used these two bottles. I made an extra large batch because I'm gonna have some uh, to share with friends since we're now allowed to actually have a couple friends over on the terrace of our homes now here in Belgium, thank goodness. Um, so I used two bottles of a Bordeaux and the other alcohol mix that I put in was a few splashes of Cointreau, okay? Um, I like that it has a bit of that orangey flavor to it. I know a lot of sangrias use brandy. Mine doesn't, I didn't have some brandy, so. I didn't feel the need for it. Uh, the fruit that I included, uh, I used just almost a full lime, a lemon and two oranges sliced up and cut in half, okay? Um, I mean, you can do the full circular size. I just found when pouring them in and out of glasses, it was kind of tricky to fit the whole slice in, so I cut them in half. I also use, not shown here, some frozen raspberries that I've had in my freezer and I've been slowly pulling them out to put into different drinks. Mix them all up put that in a big um, a big bowl. And I also made some simple syrup. I'd say maybe about four ounces of simple syrup. I think it's usually like two ounces per bottle. Um, and that seems to be okay, more or less, if you like your sangria a little sweeter or a little drier. And I put that all together in a big bowl and I sit it in the fridge for a couple hours so it can sit. When I'm ready to serve it, I usually pour into my glass. Um, I use a ladle or I transfer the sangria into a, um, into a carafe. And I usually fill up to about here, and the rest I put a splash of sparkling water. And for this, I just use Perrier, okay? Um, I think it tastes pretty good. Remember, the longer you let it soak, the um, more potent it will be. This was actually sitting in my fridge since last night, so we'll see. Cheers, hopefully I still like the taste of it. Oh yeah, that's great, super refreshing. Um, I didn't actually put any ice in this one, but usually I toss a few ice cubes in it too, just to keep it cooler longer. So if you end up making the sangria, let me know what you think, or if you have your own special recipe for sangria, I would love to hear it. As always, I'm interested in hearing about new cocktails. Hope you'll notice this is not a gin cocktail for once. Um, but yeah, thought nice outside, might as well have some sangria. So let's move on to the painting activity. Um, a few materials you're gonna need today because we are doing watercolor painting are your watercolor paints. All right, a nice selection of colors. I'm gonna be using cooler colors for this project, but of course you can use whichever ones you like. I've got two paint brushes with me, a smaller one and a bigger one, all right? Um, I have my water cup with water, a paper towel to blot my brushes, my pencil. I'm gonna do a little bit of light drawing just to break up my page. And I have a bit of tape. I think for a project like this, because we're gonna be doing a lot of painting, it's a good idea to tape down your paper. The watercolor paper I'm using is actually quite a thick handmade paper. I have a few sheets of this lying around, so I thought I'd use them up. Um, you can use just a regular watercolor paper, or if you just have regular drawing paper at home too, that would be okay. So we're gonna get started. Um, we're gonna be making a landscape that shows a middle ground, foreground, and a background, kind of breaking up the, um, the, the, the paper a little bit to show a bit of depth. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. You can follow along, and hopefully you are also enjoying a tasty adult beverage while you create. So let's get started. All right, so first off, I'm going to actually divide my paper into a few different sections here to show the foreground, middle, bound, and middle ground, and background, sorry. Um, I'm gonna be doing a mountain scene. And so I'm going to just take my pencil and draw from one edge, sort of a curve, not straight line, it's a little bumpy, from one edge down to the other. And then the same thing down on the other side, I'm actually gonna overlap a little bit. And then one more down this way. 
okay? And the idea is, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. The idea is each one of these is going to show a different part of a mountain. So I'm gonna have my sky, the mountain that's furthest away, the mountain in the middle, and the mountain that's closest to us. And in the very front, I'm gonna end up having a tree line here, but I'm not gonna draw that in just yet, okay? In fact, I might not even draw that in. So um, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna just tape down my edges because I wanna have my paper stay nice and close to the table and not bubble up because I'm gonna be using, I think, quite a lot of paint. I'm gonna take my tape. Sometimes this type of paper doesn't take as well to the tape, so I won't be surprised if some of my color leaks under the tape, that's okay. Um, if, you, if you do it right, and I'd say it works that way about 50, no, nah, let's say 70% of the time, um, you don't end up with any paint under your tape, but I can already tell that's not gonna be the case with this paper. Just because of the way the tape isn't really sticking, I should be using real masking tape, but I'm gonna save that masking tape for some bigger projects. I think I'll keep this just for the small ones. This is more just to keep my paper fairly steady. Okay, you want it to be kind of straight if you can get it that way. If not, no biggie. Oh, this is popping right up. I don't know if this is gonna work so well. Come on, tape. Don't give me a hard time. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. All right, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> as long as it keeps the paper from bubbling up, that's all I care about. All right, now we're gonna get started. Um, you can choose the colors you want. I am going to actually go with a really um, sort of dark blue color. I'm just gonna switch my palette around a little bit. I'm gonna go with this nice dark blue color. And the idea is, um, the further away in your picture, the lighter the colors are gonna be, all right? So on a piece of paper, the further away from you something is, the higher it is up on the paper, okay? So technically the sky here would be the furthest away from me, and then this mountain, then this one, and then this one. So I'm gonna actually work from lightest to darkest. So I'm gonna take my large brush and this lovely blue color, and I'm just gonna add a little bit here, and I'm just gonna start painting back and forth, and it's gonna have such a lovely light effect. And you'll notice I use a lot of water. Okay, so that's really, really light. That's the lightest color I'm gonna work with. Now I'm gonna move in, and the next one, I'm going to make a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm gonna need to add a little more color. Now, if I feel it's too much of a jump in color, I can always add more water and thin it out, but I think I'm kind of on the right track here. So I'm gonna just keep going. Okay, now the next one, a little bit darker. Okay, so the last one is gonna be quite a bit darker. I'm hoping I can get it that dark. If not, what I might do to save a little bit of time is I might go over it with an even darker uh, blue. In fact, I think that's what I'm gonna to have to do. Another option could be to put a little bit of black on top too. We'll see if that is something that I can do for this. So I've got my background, sorry, my back background, background, middle ground, and foreground. This here is a little, I'm not sure how I feel about all this here. I might blend this out a little bit. If you can catch watercolor paint before it dries, you can generally kind of fix it the way you want. You can actually go in and make it a little darker here. I feel like this middle one is kind of in a funny spot. It's not really doing what I want, but whatever, that's okay. All right, so now I'm going to switch out my brush and I'm gonna go with this uh, smaller brush. This brush has the curved edge, sorry, angled edge, I should say, it's, that's definitely not curved, an angled edge, which I really like because it means I can use it, the, the tip and then the edge as well. Okay, that's just my preference. Oh, the sangria is so tasty. Um, I'm gonna start adding my trees down here. Now, when I start painting on this, because this is still wet, there's a good chance my trees may blot out and spread a little bit. 
I am okay with that because when it does dry, I can always go in and kind of hash out some of those details. Okay, so I'm gonna be working with my black now and I'm going to make some evergreen trees and I'm gonna take my brush and watch how I put the paint on my brush. Hang on, let me see if I can do this trail. I'm just putting it right across the edge because I'm going to be painting from the bottom up. Well, yeah, it's bleeding a little bit and I'm, I'm okay with that because I think it's gonna look cool in the end. Okay, now I'm gonna actually take my brush and I'm gonna sort of blot in this bottom part here so that it kind of is covered in a little bit. And I'm not brushing, I'm sort of dabbing at it. Now, kind of a scary, sad looking forest, right? So what I'm gonna do now is while it's still a little wet, I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go back onto that black paint and I am going to kind of move my brush upwards. And now this is where that tiny part comes in. Ooh, the little trees. In the words of Bob Ross, happy little trees. Although these trees are kind of scary, that's okay. See how I'm turning the brush? Now, it is starting to dry up a little bit. I can always take my brush and go in and really kind of flash out some of those trees a little bit more and see how I'm basically using it like a pencil. And I'm going in and I'm kind of bringing out the dark shadows of some of those trees so they stand out a little bit more. I'm not gonna do it to all of them. Oh, I forgot one here. Just to some of them. All right, there it is. Now, if you wanna get a little fancy, you could go in and start adding a few trees up here in the other parts of your, um, of your background, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna break the rules a little bit and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a little bit of an extra color up here into my sky, just for fun. And I'm gonna add a little bit of purple because blue and purple are friends. They get along really nicely because they are both cool colors and you use blue to make purple. Cool, oh, 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 uh-oh, adding more colors. This is why I love watercolor, because you can just do it. And the thing else so great about watercolor, if you mess up, nobody knows. They didn't know that you didn't mean to do it that way. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh, I could go in maybe and add a little bit more to my mountains. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get real nuts here. Let's see how this goes. I did not plan on this at all. I'm gonna add some green. Let's see how this works. All right, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I could sit here and, I don't know, maybe I'll add a little bit more. I could sit here and <laughs> play around on this for ages, right? As long as the paint's wet, it's gonna let me add more to it. Some kind of clouds. But yeah, I'm not gonna overdo it. I have a bad habit of doing that. But I mean, when you try this out, you can do what you like. There you go. And that's that, okay? I could also go back in and even pull out some of these a little bit more if I wanted to, but I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna actually take away the tape. Mm, yeah, did not do such a great job of that. That's okay. It still has that rustic look. My lines on the sides are actually pretty clean. Just this one corner didn't do me so well. Oh, that's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. Just this little area. I'm wondering if I can 
take my paper towel. If I get this tape off my fingers, get out of here. Ah, if I can clean some, oh, clean some of this up a little bit. No, that's not gonna happen. That's okay. And there it is. So um, I hope you enjoyed this art activity. If you end up trying this out at home, please do share it with me. Um, we're on Facebook at A Little Box of Paints and there is always the YouTube channel where you are watching this video, A Little Box of Paints, and on Instagram where I show a lot of work done by artists at home, A Little Box of Paints. So have fun creating. Hopefully you enjoy a little bit of sangria while you do it. I'm gonna finish up my sangria and clean up and I hope you have a super awesome weekend. See you later.